Hi, my name is David Zeben from Zeben Development and today I'm going to give you an overview of The Magician for the Razor's Edge. So The Magician um, has three main steps. First is the creation of a merge file which consists of a primary constituent and a secondary constituent. The secondary constituent is merged into the primary constituent. Secondly is, is the merge itself and thirdly is the post-merge cleanup where we clean up all the duplicate information created from the merge. So there are two methods of um, creating the merge file. Firstly we can use RaiseEdge built-in duplicate criteria or we can use the magician's own um, email duplicate criteria. So let's have, let's have a quick look at the, the built-in RaiseEdge duplicate criteria. And when we go to um, if I bring another instance of RaiseEdge, go to can, business rules here, we can see these are the duplicate criteria that exist in Razor's Edge. Now of course we can add to them. The moment it just says the first ten letters of the last name and the first five letters of the first name. But of course if we wanted to we could add address fields as well. But then we are of course some, uh, limiting ourselves somewhat. If somebody has moved um, and they have a duplicate address on the Razor's Edge then we don't know that uh, this will be picked up if we add address fields. At the same time if we only use first name and last name it might be picking up false positives. Um, so let's look at a... Uh, well, the, the magician itself uses the same output from the duplicate constituent report. And let's look at uh, that output now. Um, here's one I produced earlier. I will say for, in this case Jennifer Bray there's three duplicates in the system. It's hard to know if they really are duplicates or not just by looking at this report. Um, but of course we can, uh, if we want to, we could investigate further looking at those records. So if we look very briefly at um, a query that I wrote earlier, this shows all the braids in Razor's Edge. And here we even see four braids. One is uh, three Jennifers and one David. And we have their addresses up here. That clearly looks like Jennifer and David are in the same household. Um, and uh, the two others aren't. But looking at their email addresses, we can see that three of the records appear to be the same people, uh, whereas the last one appears to be someone different. Indeed, it's uh, the other side of, the, of USA, so most likely that isn't the same person. But clearly here, this Jennifer Bray and this Jennifer Bray are the same people who just moved house, and this is not the same person. Now, if we just use um, if we just use their uh, first and last name as duplicate criteria, um, it will try to pick up all the uh, Jennifer Brays and merge them together. If we just use the email addresses, then it will pick up the first three, which is incorrect because David and Jennifer share an email address. But using a combination of, um, of various criteria within the magician, we can pick out exactly which uh, values we want. So we're going to take a closer look now at the magician. Um, and we're going to run through an example of using um, the email criteria rather than the built-in Razor's Edge duplicate criteria. So let's take a look at the Magician. The first step is to go to the plugins and select the Magician plugin here. And what we do first of course is to create a merge file. Now you don't have to use facility built into the magician to create a merge file. If you have an out, if you've outsourced a third party to look at your database and create a, a duplicate file for you, then you can use that as long as there's two columns, one with a primary constituent ID and one with a secondary constituent ID. That would work fine. But in our case we're going to create a merge file. So the first thing is to select the file we're going to um, save as and we'll just select one I've created earlier but um, and that's obviously merge. And here are two duplicate methods. One is using the built-in Razor duplicate rules, and the other is the match on email, which we're going to use now. Um, and of course, this will work fine, but um, it won't pick up where somebody has say, a, a joint email address, as David and Jennifer Bray do. Um, so if we select the more uh, settings, we can say, for example, select to, uh, to match on the first name as well. So in the case of David and Jennifer, they won't try to merge their records together. Um, now we can determine the primary record by uh, different priority here. 
Um, either you want to do it all based on the total number of gifts, total actions, uh, which of these is the oldest record, of course, and, and, and for uh, net community users, um, whether the constituent has a, a BBNC login or not. Um, and then, of course, we can exclude, um, c exclude constituents from this merge if they, for example, have a constituent code of VIP or have an attribute um, or if they're in a certain query. Alternatively, you can include them specifically if they are in a certain query. We're just going to run um, without any further criteria. So we start this and give it a few moments to run. It'll run through relatively quickly um, because our database is small. Of course, the larger the database and the more the larger number of duplicates, the longer it'll take to run. So um, we're going to now take a quick look at that file. So let's bring up the Excel file to have a look. So here we can see instead of having three Jennifer Bray records, we only have two. And these are the two that we truly think are the duplicates. So here we see Jennifer Bray and, and the email addresses are exactly the same in this case. Um, probably what's happened is the per Jennifer Bray has moved from San Francisco to Redondo Beach um, and they've come in as two separate records into Ray's Edge but given they have the same email address it's the same person. Um, if we were to just rely on the email address of course we would have also had David Bray in there as a duplicate of Jennifer Bray because the email address is the same but because we match on the first name we avoid that duplicate, we avoid that, that merge. So now we can move on to the actual merge itself. So we create a, a, um, create a control report. And if you want to do, we can create a query of the merge records as well. Let's have a quick look at the options available to us. Just as, you, just as with um, the regular Razor Edge merge, we can decide which areas of the record that should be merged. Uh, in this case, we'll select all of them. We can also select to delete the secondary record after merge as well. We can add, or alternatively, we can add an attribute to that record instead to say that it should be deleted. So let's do that. We can also add the deleted or the, or the secondary um, constituents, constituent ID um, as an alias on the retained first, the primary constituent ID. That way, if we have any, any reference to that record, it's the, the ID can be retained as an alias so it's not lost and we know who we're referring to. So at this point we would go ahead and do the merge but I'm also just going to show you um, the post-merge options, the post-merge cleanup options. So one of the drawbacks of doing a merge in Razor's Edge is that uh, we do indeed merge all the records and all the data is merged together. And what that means is though that we quite often get duplicate um, areas of the record added together and these are the areas which uh, most frequently are duplicated. Um, so we can select to remove these areas optionally um, so whether duplicate constituent codes or appeals or addresses or attributes we can remove these uh, duplicates. Now we don't just uh, remove um, all duplicates exactly um, we allow you to have some kind of restrictions over what's removed and how they're removed and how the uh, the match is made as to what, what is it actually a duplicate. So for example, um, for appeals you may want to not only match on the um, the appeal itself but perhaps on the, the package or the date to ensure that it really is a duplicate. So let's OK those options and We'll start the merge process. Now this should be relatively quick because there are so few mergers. Or clearly, um, in a scenario where you have a lot more um, records, it'll take a lot longer to process. Now let's bring up our query again. Let's close this. Our query. So in this case, the last name is equal to Bray. 
and we, we didn't select delete um, the record, we just added an attribute to it so that's why we still see the same number but if we look at um, the first one, first record here we should see there's now an alias on there of the merge constituent ID of, of the previous one or the secondary record um, and all, all of the records, all the items off from that record have now come over to this record let's have a look at that other record and again it should now be on an attribute to delete saying that it's added it's safe to delete this record because we've merged it so that was just a, a brief overview of the magician um, if you have any questions then please feel free to contact us I'd be happy to answer them for you uh, thank you for listening